Rocket, the light at the end of the tunnel's finally starting to peak through. Um, almost a quarter of the playing list are back this week. Yeah, it's a long tunnel, um, but uh, yeah, they've got uh, five players uh, back this week. Um, another three are playing in the seconds who are returning, uh, three or four. So um, yeah, it gives us eight or nine back. Uh, so that's uh, a step in the right direction. What expectations can we have of those returning? Um, obviously not going to be easy for them to come straight back in and find that synergy straight away. No, I don't think so. I think uh, obviously with so many of them, um, a few have only missed one or two weeks. You know, Miller and Archie and uh, Rose have missed a few. Um, so yeah, they'll just take a little bit of time, but you now it's against a quality opponent. The weather's supposed to be really bad on Saturday night, so that'll make it another layer of uh, um, intrepidation, I suppose, for them. But by the same token, if they've you know, got effort, which the players have had the last few weeks, you know, that's all we need. As you touched on, the forecast doesn't look great for the weekend. Do you reckon this helps our boys out? Um, you, would, you would think it might, but Sydney are very good um, in contested ball and their, and their work around the contest. So that, I don't think it's going to affect them too much. Uh, it's probably just going to make it harder for tall players. Uh, for bigger players in the office, it's going to be difficult to mark. Um, so, um, so I think I think on both sides of the, you know, both teams are going to struggle in the height, in the height factor. Our mids were really good with the contested footy last week, but uh, against the best in the business this week, it's going to be a tough challenge. Oh no, no, no doubt. I mean, Sydney are very good. You know, that's why they're close to the top of the ladder at the moment. They're playing some really good footy, and they've got a really strong midfield. You know, players like Kennedy and Parker and Hanover are going to be well suited by the wet weather, but. Now the players cracked in last week. Um, our tackling was really good. Uh, uh, hard ball gets and our ground balls were fantastic. So if we can keep that, we've got a bit more experience in, a bit more talent in as well. So that's as another layer of um, our expectation. Stephen May was a big inclusion last week. Um, another big challenge for him with Coleman medal leader Buddy Franklin facing him. Yes, um, Stephen did pretty well last week. Um, Kennedy kicked five, but probably probably only two or three. You probably count. As far as for Stephen, um, I thought his leadership was terrific, you know, and he's only going to get better as, as the weeks go on, so I thought, I thought it was a positive step. Some really good news off field with uh, Adam Sarden and Sean Lemons re-signing this week. Um, positive signs in terms of the direction the club's heading in? Yeah, that's right. On the back of Alex Sexton the week before, so you know, I've got a few. There's a, another few on the pipeline at the moment, so hopefully um, people outside the club and probably more Melbourne media doom and gloom at times and have their own agenda, but you know, you know, we're comfortable where we sit. Uh, I think the players know where we're headed and what the direction is, and we've certainly got a plan going forward. And uh, I think um, uh, most, if not all, players are, obviously can see that plan. There's been some talk of a draft lottery this week in the media. What are your thoughts on that? I can see why people view it because of the view of tanking. Um, I, I'm not totally for it. I think the tanking debate was really when there was a priority pick. Um, I don't think about getting the number one pick. Uh, is so much for tanking, so I think we probably make a bigger issue than it needs to be. But uh, um, no, I'm not. I'm not totally for that, to be honest.